Hey, I'm Michael from Serato. Today I'm going to be showing you a few tips and tricks for using the SV6 sample player in Scratch Live versions 1.9 and higher. Uh, the SV6 allows you to play six additional sources of audio as well as the tracks playing on the virtual decks. This is cool for throwing in stings and sound effects to spice up and personalize your sets. Okay, to start, click on the sample player tab to open the six slots. Drag and drop a track into one of the slots. You'll now see a mini overview of the file here. Any audio file in your Scratch Live library can be loaded to any one of the six slots, allowing playback of short samples and sound effects through to full length tracks. These three buttons are for the different available play modes, trigger mode, hold mode, and on-off mode. Trigger mode will play the audio right through until the end of the track. You can stop the sample from playing by holding the ALT key and its corresponding shortcut key. Hold mode will only play a sample whilst you are holding the play key or corresponding shortcut key. So when you take your finger off the key, the sample will stop. With on off mode, when you press play once, the sample will play right through yeah. until the end, and if you press the key again, it will stop the sample. Okay. Yeah. 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 The sample player will work with any of the Rain hardware and will output your samples over the entire mix. You can change the sample player output to only come through the left or the right side by clicking these buttons. If you own the Rain SL3, you have the option of outputting the sample player from the auxiliary outputs into another channel on your mixer. So as you can see here, we've got the AUX 1 and 2 outputs. I'm just going to run these into the auxiliary 1 and 2 inputs on the mixer here. Just like that. You can control each slot's individual volume using these knobs and the main sample player output volume here. Each of your samples will automatically trigger from the beginning of the audio file unless you have already created cue points on the file. In this instance, the audio will play from the first cue point. You can set your sample start cue point in the same way you would for any other track using the virtual decks or the offline player. These cue points will be overridden if you have created a loop within the sample, in which case the sample will play from the beginning of the loop. You create loops for your samples in the same way as you do cues, using the virtual decks or offline player. You can also set a sample to loop repeatedly by clicking this repeat button. If you have a loop set on the sample, then the loop will continue to play until you stop it. All features of the SP6 sample player are MIDI assignable. To assign MIDI, make sure the sample player window is open first, then click the MIDI button and map your controls. If you own the Rain TTM 57SL, you can customize its buttons to control the sample player's parameters. Go into the Hardware tab and choose the custom group you want to assign to, then right-click on the Controls label. A list of available assignments will appear. So for example, you could assign all six of the sample player triggers to each of the cue buttons, or the output volume to the scroll tracks knob and so on. The Scratch Live SP6 Sample Player. Show us your ear horns! <laughs>